Hello everyone. In part 20, we have started uh, Wittig reaction and in that video, we have just seen the preliminary idea of this reaction. Today, we will see how we can achieve stereoselectivity in Wittig reaction. What happens when we try to combine an aldehyde or unsymmetrical ketone? with an unsymmetrical electron. So as we are talking about stereoselectivity, so we have to take aldehyde because in aldehyde, both sides we have two different groups. Hydrogen will be there, that is must. And there is another alkyl group. But if we are taking symmetrical ketone, then it will, uh, no question of stereoselectivity, okay? So we have to take either aldehyde because in aldehyde, we already have one hydrogen. So the other uh, group, it must be different. And if we want to take ketone, then it must be unsymmetrical. So this, this is all about the carbonyl compound and the elide that should also be unsymmetrical. That is the groups that are attached to this carbon that must be different. Now, if these conditions are satisfied, then only we will get two different types of oxaphosphatase. One is seen in which hydrogens are on the same side it is not necessary that hydrogen it depends on the group but the lowest priority groups that will be on the same side so this this is seen and in another possibility is anti oxaphosphate here the two hydrogens are on the opposite side so as we are getting to different types of oxaphosphate intermediate so that is the reason finally when we will get the alkene there will be two possibilities. So the intermediate oxaphosphate, it is diastereomeric in nature because it is syn or it is anti. So from the syn, we will uh, finally get the alkene which is Z because both the hydrogens are on the same side. That is lowest priority groups are on the same side or it may be E. Now E we will be getting from the anti diastereomer. Now it is dependent on the nature of the elite, whether syn will be the major intermediate or anti will be the major inter intermediate that is dependent on the nature of elite. Nature of elite means whether the elite is stabilized elite or it is not stabilized. Okay, but how to know whether it is stabilized or unstabilized that we will see now. So when we are saying that it is stabilized elite, there will be presence of conjugating and anion stabilizing substituents attached to carbon. So this is the carbon in the elite and here the groups uh, that will be present just beside this that is adjacent to this carbon, there must be some electron withdrawing group that is anion stabilizing group. So here we have carbonyl, so this group has an uh, stabilizing property or it may be some conjugation because if there is any CC double bond, then this negative charge can take part in conjugation with the double bond and as a result, it will get some stability. So these are the conditions if we want to make stabilized elides. But suppose if it is not stabilized, obviously this type of electron withdrawing group will not be present, that will be uh, stabilizing this negative charge. So the unstabilized elides, it is simple, it is containing alkyl groups. So alkyl groups, it has donating effect, plus I effect, okay. So it will not stabilize this negative charge. On the other, on the contrary, it will destabilize it, okay. So these are the two types of nature of elides, stabilized, unstabilized. Next, we will see that how it is controlling the final product stereoselectivity, okay. Unstabilized elite. What happens in unstabilized elites? That we will see first. So we have already seen that here syn oxaphosphatase is formed. Now why it is formed? See, syn oxaphosphatase it is formed by reversible uh, mechanism. Okay. Now it is reversible because here the elite that we have taken that is not stable. Here we have alkyl group. So as it is not stable. So it will be irreversible. It will not come back to uh, starting materials. 
And now if we look at the transition state for this intermediate oxaphosphatidine, the two large groups, one R group is present in aldehyde, this purple R, and R prime that is present in elite. Now here the approach of this uh, blue part that is the elite that is perpendicular to the CO double bond because this type of orientation it will allow the two R groups to remain far apart from each other. So as these two large groups are uh, far from each other so it will be stabilizing. So that is the reason that the approach is like this. Okay. It is perpendicular to this CO bond. This CP bond is perpendicular to this CO bond. Large groups are away from each other. This is unstable but form at a faster rate. Now this type of orientation obviously it is not very stable but it is formed at a faster rate than the anti oxaphosphatin. So that is the reason it is also kinetically uh, it will lead to kinetically controlled product. Okay. So kinetically controlled Control product means here we are not, we will not see what is the yield. That is uh, how much product we are getting starting uh, compared to starting material. Level. But we will see how fast it is occurring. So that is why it is kinetically controlled. And as here the intermediate is not very stable. So the product that we will be getting finally that is the same intermediate, oxaphosphate intermediate where the two uh, lowest priority groups are on the same side it will be formed at a faster rate not uh, we are not focusing on the amount we are focusing on the how how much faster it will form so it will form at a faster rate so that is why it is kinetically controlled product and from this we will finally get the z alkene okay now we will see one example which will involve unstabilized elite so in this example we can see that the carbonon actually will be formed at this carbon though the carbonon is not uh, shown here. We are uh, here TBU okay the potassium tertiary butoxide base. So in presence of base carbonon will be generated at this position and this carbonon is not stable at all because of this isopropyl alkyl group. So this is the example of unstabilized elect. And here we have taken aldehyde uh, where we have this large R group. This R group is basically you can compare with this one and uh, it is aldehyde so other group is hydrogen. So final compound that we are getting that is Z alkene and it is 90%. So this is the stereoselectivity. Both hydrogens are on the same side. Okay. So major compound will be Z. 10% will be E. So this is all about the uh, unstabilized elites what is going on here. Next we will see in case of stabilized elite what will happen. In stabilized elite that will lead to the formation of anti oxaphosphatin but here some amount of sin oxaphosphatin that will also be formed and but anti oxaphosphatin that will be formed in higher amount finally it will lead to the E alkene and this E alkene is thermodynamically controlled product. First look at this starting material here R prime which is present in elite that is actually COR double prime. That means it will stabilize the carbonon which will be present here because the another structure is uh, that is possible resonating structure is like this. You can write CP double bond or you can write this type of structure. Okay, so this carbonon will be stabilized because of R prime because R prime is actually containing carbonyl group. So this step, uh, elite is the example of stabilized elite. Okay, so this stabilized elite and we have taken aldehyde so both these groups are different so in this case now see we are using reversible sign so here this sin intermediate and this anti intermediate both these intermediate they are in equilibrium with the starting material composition and equilibrium established between the less stable sin form and more stable anti form of oxaphosphate. Okay. Now, this type of reversibility is possible because reversibility possible means I mean to say that it can again go back to original starting material uh, site that is right hand side to left hand side. 
and this is possible because the stability of elides make this step possible because as the stable um, elide is now more stable so the step is now reversible that is it can go back to starting material and once it can go back to starting material that means it is reversible now the sin and anti though both forms are obtained but the formation of z from sin it will be slow now it is slow because sin this intermediate it will not form in higher amount because it is not stable okay anti will be formed in higher amount and it will form this e at a faster rate so before decomposition sin oxaphosphatase and more stable anti form it ingrad converts among themselves slowly so among them also there will be some amount of equilibrium okay but as here the formation of e is faster from the anti uh, form anti intermediate so that is the reason as if this anti intermediate it will be siphoned off from the media so it will be withdrawn so as a as this step is very fast so gradually the amount of anti will be less and less because once it is formed it is uh, converted to the e product uh, at the same time okay so as it is siphoned off from the medium so now anti form will be uh, consumed more and more so from sin even if there is any uh, little amount of sin intermediate that will also be converted to anti so there is equilibrium between sin and anti and as from the anti the formation of e alkene is fast so that is the reason gradually sin Uh, the little amount of sin that is formed that will also be converted to anti so finally we are getting here the major L e alkene here hydrogens are on the same side it is opposite example is p ph3 plus then ch2 actually carbonyl will be formed here and this is electron withdrawing group present fine and we have taken benzyl dehyde and 100% e see the stereoselectivity is so high that we are getting 100% e it, though it is a specific example it is not that you will always get 100% e e it may vary but we have to remember here the main thing is that in stabilized elite thermodynamically controlled product is uh, actually we are obtaining but in case of unstabilized elite we are obtaining uh kinetically controlled product okay so these are all about the stereo selectivity next we will see one example where we will be having the idea that which route will be preferred if we want to make a specific alkene so suppose we want to make this alkene now see these two compounds are actually same right only the groups are written in a different color but actually it is same because here we have 1 2 3 4 5 5 five carbon but here it is drawn in blue color but it is five carbon so one side we have five carbon with the ethyl chain ethyl substituents and another side we have three carbon and in the first case it is uh, in blue color in the second it is purple color but actually these two molecules are same so suppose we want to make this alkene okay so there are two possibilities that is you can take uh, the elide which will contain this one of the group or the elide it may contain the three carbon chain group okay so two possibilities will be there now which route will be preferred that is dependent on the route that is involving where the phosphorus elide reagent has less steric hindrance that route will be preferred so now we will see the starting material combination so if we are taking this purple uh, part from the carbonyl compound then this will be the carbonyl compound because this portion will actually contain the co double bond okay and here this is the elide in the second case now the carbonyl compound that will contain three carbon chain the 
that is this purple part and the five carbon blue part that will come from the elite okay so if you want to move backward you just, that is retrosynthesis just clip this part so in this part there will be co double bond and another possibility is pph3 okay so now this part is compared to this simple three carbon chain this is sterically hindered uh, region okay so when we are trying to make these two different types of elites suppose this is one and this is two so two is uh, sterically more hindered and the corresponding halide from which we will make these uh, elites these two halides will be like this so here the halide that we will take in is simple CH3CH2CH2Br in the second case this uh, the halide that we are taking here is ch3 ch2 c and actually it is total five card okay sorry here one mistake i have done is br so here we will get the br right at this position there will be br that is if we want to move in retro uh, want to follow retrosynthetic path so this br and there will be not this hydrogen it will be CH2 CH3 so this should be the corresponding uh, halide from which we will make this so, sorry it is BR CH2 CH3 then H this is the actual structure not this one Okay, so this will be the halide. Now, if we compare these two halide, this is containing three carbon, this is containing five carbon. So obviously, uh, this com this halide is more sterically hindered compared to this one. Okay, so here preferred route will be the first route. The first route route is preferred because it is involving the elite which is less sterically hindered and the corresponding halide. This is also simpler compared to this halide. Okay. So here preferred route will be the first one. So this is all about this uh, video. In next video also it, it will be related to VT and uh, we will see some more aspects of this reaction. If you find the video helpful please like share and subscribe. I will meet you in the next video. Thank you for your time.